Hi guys, Sarah the Northwood Stitcher here. I'm going to be filming a bunch of little segments and editing them together. I wanted to show you guys some of the framed cross stitches that I'm actually trying to get downstairs to hang up. So I thought I'd film this part first. I, I think I might have all of my cross stitches, but it seems to me I have more than this. So there might be some coming up in another editing. <laughs> we'll see. This is a, uh, some of them need to be dusted. This is a gold collection petite called Winter Hideaway. I did this in 2006. It was pretty easy to do because the petites are five by seven, so you can buy the pre-cut frames. And I love how detailed this one is. So that's Gold Collections Petite Winter Hideaway. I've got packaging everywhere. I'm doing a lot of wrapping today, wrapping presents. And I have to take a break because my back is hurting. This is a little cutie. This was gifted to me as a kit from the Cotton and Twine that's a subscription that my friend Sophia belongs to. She sent this up to me and I stitched it. It was from their October 2021 um, subscription box. But I just love all the little birds on that. And I don't recall if this is how they wanted you to frame it or not, but I thought this was a, a cute little way to frame it in these elasticized hoops. It's not finished on the back, so I do need to put some sort of backing on it, and then I'll be able to label it properly. This is Little House Needleworks. It's Season's Greetings. I think originally they had this on a khaki or a tan fabric, and I had this wintry looking I guess it's a it's a gray it's almost like a blue gray um that chart was dated 2014 I think you can still find it but it's season's greetings by little house needleworks and I remember I had this frame probably from goodwill or something I thought that would be a cute way to finish it. And this is from Country Cottage Needleworks. This is called Snow Love. And I did not put that behind glass. I love that polka dot linen. It's probably a 28 count. But the little snowmen actually have little beads on them. I'd like to do some more of these and make them into pillow forms for a dough bowl or a tear stand. This is a little freestanding frame that it's in. I don't think I signed the front. Nope. This is a favorite. I wish I remember where I got this frame but I stained it. I remember it was a, a lighter wood color. And when I stained it, I just kind of brushed it rough. So it has almost teaked look to it. And this is Little Dove Designs, Merry Christmas. I did this on a 32 count taupe Lugana, all DMC floss over two. I finished it in April of 2020 framed it in May of 2020. But what a fun stitch that was. I really like these type of stitches because you can just do a segment or a section at a time and it feels so rewarding when it's done. This does not have any little beads on it, but I think because doing it with two strands, it really gave it some dimension. So it almost looks like those are beads, but they're not. I did not put it under glass. I have a post and beam house, so this will go on one of the beams. And I really like that effect. 
that washboard effect. It's a cute little stitch. What else is in here? Oh, I have some smalls. I think I showed you guys a pillow. I did this again and framed it. I don't recall where it's from, but I put this in a little freestanding frame. And it's just very dramatic with the black frame. And that does have beads in it. I think that was a fun stitch to do. It looks to be on a, it might be a 22 count red. It's pretty tiny. I did this in 2013. I don't know where it's from. But this is a really cute little beveled frame I picked up somewhere. It didn't have any proper backing, so all I did was put some acid-free backing on the stitch part. It is glassed. And then I used some of my carding paper to put on the back, and I didn't tape it very well. But it's just a cute little standalone somewhere in a corner. Now, this was done by a friend of mine. I'm pretty sure this was her card. A friend of mine named Diane stitched this for me. And I framed it. Because I just loved how much work was done. And again, it looks very dramatic in this black frame. And it's a freestanding frame. But I think I'd have to open it up and look inside to see what year she gave me this card. That in and of itself is just a treasured gift. I love the black work on it. And she's metallics in the flakes, the snowflakes. It's just a great design. Let me pause this and grab the other bin. I don't remember the name of this one, but it did come from a magazine. And again, it was one of those do a bunch of little sections and it's really rewarding. And I loved getting it. I got this professionally framed because at the time I was not cutting my own mat boards and I certainly wouldn't attempt a, a shape like that. But that was done in 2004. It actually says July of 2004. And it was fun to get that frame professionally. It's a bit dirty. I need to take it down and give it a wash. A lot of these things only get washed once a year. Here's another one from a magazine. I always had an intention to do a red one, but I really like the green Santa. And I probably can find the magazine. This was done in 2006. And I had this one professionally framed. And I really thought the blue went really well with the blue in his belt and picked up the colors pretty well. Stick him in a pillowcase. Ah, here are some prairie schoolers. I wonder if these were the first ones. These might be the first ones I ever did. Because back in the day, I went to a little cross-stitch shop, and you could buy these little frames. And they've seen better days. They're all dinged up. But these were done... Don't know. They were initialed, but they weren't dated. I know these were some of my first ones that I've done. They're looking a little long in the tooth now. 
This is a more recent one. This says 2018. It is not under glass, but it's got chickadees, so I had to do it. It's a freestanding. This one I am not too thrilled with. I got a frame and spray painted it gold, or maybe my husband did it for me because I'm not very good at spray painting. This is a Sue Hillis. It's called Mary Noel. And I remember I had to add some to the bottom because of just the way it was going to be framed. I really need to find something to go on the bottom here or reframe it. But I think I showed you this chart that was in my Christmas collection of Christmas stitches. And it is a gorgeous pattern. That's Mary Noel by Sue Hillis. But at least the frame was free. Now, let's see. Where can I put that one? The goal is to get these things hung up tomorrow. So I need to get them downstairs and out from under my feet so I can access my bows and my ribbons. All right, let me get the next lot. This one I really love. My father did this and I begged him for a copy of the chart. He got this as a kit it is a weekenders kit. Supposedly you're supposed to be able to do these in a weekend. <laughs> this is called Santa Moon and it is a weekenders kit. I think you can still get it on eBay. I put this in a very cheap plastic um, frame and I think it's really great with these accents to really make this one pop. It's got sequin stars and a larger sequin star, and it's just incredible. That is from 2017. That's when I finished that one. I don't remember putting this up last year, so I'll be excited to get this one up. And there's metallic thread in amongst the silver stars. It's just a, a beautiful finish, fun to stitch. This is not a Christmas cross stitch. I got this on clearance probably from a Goodwill. And what I did was I, I put this out at Christmas. And then after Christmas, when I'm putting Christmas stuff away, I flip it around and I have Valentine's. I love finding two, two ways of having a space saver. So that works. I don't recall where I got this little pattern, but I like the little lace edge and I just put some scrapbooking paper in the back, mounted this on some foam board and I used that chenille yarn to put as an edging around it so it's dimensional. So I'll put that out for Christmas. This was something I did in 2014. It came from a magazine. I don't recall which magazine. I wanted to do something on red rather than a red work I wanted something on red fabric and it was a little confusing to do because I should have probably done the deer in more strands because I, I don't like how you can see a little bit of red through the deer. There are beads. Beads are in the snowflake areas and it looks like a metallic but it's not. No, there's no metallic. There is an iridescent thread that I used on the snowflakes that makes it shimmer a bit. Where am I gonna put that one? I 
This is also another known name. It was professionally framed in 2013. And this was something to do on green work. But I do like this one. I wish I knew what fabric that was because that green I really like. And I'd like to do some more. But I, I don't recall where it came from. It's it's almost like a a blue green, an evergreen blue. It's so pretty. And that's just simple white thread. There's nothing else. No beadwork or anything in that. I have another pile. This is Believe, and this is a Dimensions kit. You can probably still find this kit on eBay. I chose a gold mat. I don't recall if I cut the mat or if I bought it, but it does have a little shimmer to it. I love that wrapping paper behind the word Believe. So it's a Dimensions kit. I stitched it in 2016 and it's called Believe. It's a five by seven, so it's very easy to frame. No metallics. Love the colors in that. Oh, this one's cute. This is something I did in 2016 from Little House Needleworks. It's called Snow White. I did mark on the back. I got the frame from Goodwill. And this is just a sweet stitch to go on a dresser. It's a freestanding. I like this pattern because you can do just one piece and make it into a small, longer pillow, which is something I might actually do. This is done on probably an 18 count so it's pretty tiny. And I would call that a Wedgwood or a Sage Green fabric. I showed you guys this pattern. This is Joan Elliott's Red Work Noel. Now this is a chart that I had in my collection from Imaginating and it's from 2012. I stitched this in 2014. I'm pretty sure this is the one where I have two different... Yeah. I didn't know how many skeins of red I was going to use. And I had to go back and get some more. And it was a different lot number. So if you look really closely, you can see that there are two different reds in here. But I think I did a pretty good job blending them. And this is just a gold frame that I had. I framed it myself. It's probably something I picked up at a thrift store. It's hideously gold, but I, I loved how it looked in here. And there's only so many things I can frame in black frames. Oh, and I talked about this one. This was Crosswing Collection Mitten Games, and this is a fabric that's, I guess it's a, a bleaching effect where they splash to make it look like there's snowflakes coming down. So when I bought this fabric, it was pretty pricey for me to buy the fabric and the chart. And I thought, well, I'm gonna frame it so you can get more of the fabric effect. So I, I put them off centered and I think it came out pretty cute. Now he is, I did him in 2015. This is from a chart that's from 2004. And that's Crust Wing Collection, Mitten Games, number 51. Of course I had to have it because it was a chickadee. What else is in here? Ah, this is another Goodwill frame. 
This is Little House Needlework Gingerbread Trio. And I want to say I did this on a, it's some linen, I don't know what, but it's probably a 28 count. And the frame's a little rough, but every year I take it out and I give it a little bit of beeswax and it helps it bring it back to life. But I do love the the beading and the uh, frame molding, so I, I had to have that one. And I just covered it with a paper. I can't remember what I used. Probably used a Uhu glue or something. Ah, here is a Prairie Schooler. This is December. This is book 150. This is one of those plastic frames, but it has that barn wood effect. And I think this is spectacular. It's under glass. I did this in 2020. So that's Prairie Schoolers, December. Here's another great frame from Goodwill. This is Country Cottage Needleworks in the Meadow. But look at the detail on the frame. I'm not crazy about snowmen, but I really love this guy. And there's something about the trees and the pine cones. I had to do it as soon as I saw him. It looks like I did this on some sort of linen. It's probably written down in a um, in my diary. So this was done in 2019 and it's under glass. Country Cottage Needleworks in the Meadow. I can't wait to hang all these up. I don't think I can do it today. My back is done. I have been up and down ladders, wrapping presents, putting boxes together. I have two boxes ready to ship out. It looks like I have another two going out, but I haven't finished wrapping. I don't, I need to take a break. I showed you guys this one. This was the Prairie Schooler as the crow flies. And it's crooked because it's on magnets. So what I do now, this time of year, is I take off as the crow flies. And now I attach January Prairie Schooler. And it just clips right on. So that's January. I love this little frame. What I need to do is put up or do another, um, like a January, no, maybe like, maybe March. Yeah, maybe Valentine's or March one. So I could have another thing to switch out. And then a summer one. So I could have four different seasons going on. But now it's ready. I have to remember to keep this with my Christmas stuff. I just have the magnets on the back and then I'll switch it out when I take it all apart. Now oh, there's another beast in here. I don't know which one this is. Ah, this is Kodiak Christmas. This is by Imagining and it's a um, probably, I think it was a it was a kit. So this was from 2005, Kodiak Christmas. I had it professionally framed in 2013 and I finished it. I finished it in 2013. I love the border. There's so much going on. I didn't get bored doing it, that's for sure. It just changes ever so slightly as it goes around the picture. And this is 
I guess a, a burgundy matte. Looks almost brown when I'm holding it up, but it's a burgundy. I have to find a good spot for him. That glass is looking dirty. I have a lot of cleaning to do. All right, let's put this guy back in. I'm sure I'll find some more, but this is what I've got for now. At least I can get this stuff downstairs and on my walls. That'll be tomorrow. I think I'll put my feet up and I'll finish some cross stitch. And when I come back and film some more, I'll have more to show you guys. So I hope you enjoyed that little parade. I'm also gonna be showing you the stockings that my father's made. Um, I can show you one right now. Actually, I can show you too. So, this is the stocking that he stitched for me. And he did this. I know he signed it because I used to get after him about signing his work. 2001. He was very good about signing things after I would nag him persistently. But I want you to take note of something. This is my hubby stocking. It's bigger. <laughs> Every time my father stitched a stocking for a guy, they were way bigger than the stockings for women. But look at the detail on this one. He did this in 2003. And I remember when my hubby opened it, he was shocked, absolutely floored. It was such an amazing, amazing thing to get. They all have little hangers. I don't like hanging them when they're full um, because we really stuff our stockings. But I want to preserve it, so I'm pretty careful with it. I'm just happy to have them. So now that I've shown you these, I will make sure that Santa has access and we can get these, uh, we can get these filled. Okay, now I'm gonna go take all this stuff downstairs and get it on the walls at some point. See you soon. Through the power of editing, it looks like I've changed clothes, but it's another day. I have the rest of my dad's stockings. My sister sent me photos of those. I showed you the one that my husband has and I have. My dad did a total of seven that I'm aware of. I have to ask my mom, I think that's what he did. So I'm gonna show the photographs here. He did one for my um, sister, the three kids and her husband and uh, they're just gorgeous. So here they are. So oh, this is quite a little collection here. We've got um, no dates because I can't zoom in and look at some of the dates, but I think he did about one a year for some consecutive years. I know he did my nieces and nephews, my sisters first, then my nieces and nephews, and then um, the youngest nephew got one last. So I think he was just too little at first to really appreciate what it was but something else I love having these very very special a little detail on all these stockings are great and my sister's stocking she's got 12 days of Christmas So it means an awful lot to have those in the family and they're just beautiful and great treasures to have. I have done one stocking and I don't have a picture of it so maybe I'll get that sometime. Um, but it's uh, it was my first attempt to do a stocking. Should probably try to make one for maybe my cat or dog, <laughs> I'm not really sure. But uh, that was fun to do. Um, I wanted to show you guys some things that I found in my ventures out. 
I was up in a secondhand shop and up near camp and I found another glass frog for a dollar. A dollar! So I'm really excited. It's really in excellent condition. I don't think this one's ever been used. It's so clean. It doesn't need a bath. I can't tell that it's ever been used. So this will be fun to pair up with a very fancy base. And I think I have a couple now that I have to do that with. <clears throat> I also found at a craft fair, I have to unpack these unfortunately, um, mercury glass balls. They're very heavy because they're double walled and they don't have hangers, which is fine with me. I'm gonna put them in a bowl. I have a couple, I have five different ones. I found these at a craft fair and they were marked 50 cents each. This one's an iridescent crackly. And they're, they're probably not um, dated to any specific date. These are probably reproductions. I'm just really excited to have them. I've got a total of five that are gonna be downstairs. This one's very silver. I just love the crackly glass. And I probably could figure out a way to hang them, but it, they're just so heavy. I don't think they're really good for a tree. <laughs> and I don't, don't trust the cat completely. That's the third one, or the fifth one. I wrap them up to bring them down from camp. Another silver one. So I'll have to find something special to put these in. I have a variety of sizes now. I've got some mini ones and I've got some large ones. So that was fun to find. Also, what else did I find? Oh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but a lot of people are buying un unpainted plaster figurines and either spray painting them gold or silver completely rather than painting them up close. This is actually um, meant to be, it's not an unfinished painted ceramic. I think this was probably, I don't know what brand, but it says made in Taiwan. I got this from a restore and it was so badly tinged brown. I took a toothbrush and hot water and soap to it. I've cleaned it up, but I'm thinking I'm gonna paint this probably all gold or all silver see what happens. I paid 99 cents for it, so it'll be fun to play with, and I, I hope to get that done probably in the next few weeks after all the chaos of wrapping and stuff is done. What was the other thing that I wanted to show you? The, oh, I got these. Did I? I don't know if I showed you guys these. These were at the Goodwill, and they were marked... It doesn't say where they're from. $9.99 regularly priced. I got them on the half price uh, color code day, so they were $3. They're egg-shaped ornaments for my Easter tree, so I'm really excited. And I can probably add some little um, decorations to the outside or paint them if I want to. So I'm excited about that. It looks like they, it hasn't been opened at all, so this will be fun to add to my collection. I did write things down so I wouldn't forget. Oh, and I had a finished stitch I wanted to show you. <clears throat> I had started um, from Words to Stitch By. This is the gal who does the la -dee da designs. This is Lori Markovic. This was a book that I found in a thrift store. I think it's probably got about 12 different designs in it. I started this one to do my grandparents' wedding um, date and their initials at the bottom and I finished I'm so excited it's so tiny I stitched it on a 28 count Lugana one over one it's a little crooked because I stretched it funny but I'm excited to find a nice frame for this and get this framed and put up on my wall that I house all of my old black and white photos in my family tree. I like how the colors are muted for that. So I'll probably try to find a frame that looks a little antiquated, maybe some, wow, well, maybe just like a really detailed frame 
so it'll be really cute when it's done. But this is Admont Clark and Ruth Francis, and they were wedded on October 11th of 1941. I have a picture of the original wedding announcement, so I'm going to print that out and stick it on the back of the cross stitch. So in my passing, somebody can take it off the wall and see who it was, because by then it'll probably be their great, great grandparents. But this is a great way to um, have a memory of them. I'm excited for that. So this means I can get started on some other stitches. I also wanted to talk to you about um, someone who watches the video reached out to me and she's from New Zealand. Hey Michelle! She came up with a brilliant idea that I can't wait to show you here in a second. She took an old CD, an old disc music CD, and she used that as a base I don't know why I hadn't thought of this before, because we're always looking for bases to put stitches on. She used the CD with a little bit of padding and some fabric, wrapped the fabric and put on an edging, and they're just incredible. I can't wait to go to the dump, probably tomorrow or Thursday, to look through that dump house, because sometimes I can find CDs there. But what a great way to make a Christmas um, pattern on a fabric pattern and then display a cross stitch on it. So I'm going to show those right here. And I think it's just brilliant and I can't thank you enough Michelle for sharing that with us. I, I'm really excited about this finish because it solves so many problems for just a stiff base and something that's thin yet lightweight to hang and it'll look so nice on the bottom of my tree, some of the bigger stitches that I want to do. I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> oh, and then another thing. I, I showed you in a previous video, my friend Karen out in Michigan, she used a cupcake base from an individual cupcake from a specialty bakery. She sent some other great ideas. She said she took a cross-stitched um, ornament that she did from just cross-stitch. This was December 2020, and it's called Snowman's Treat. And I think you guys will recognize it when I show it. She had a, a metal thingy, she called it. That's the technical term, she said. A metal thingy she got from Goodwill for $2 and used that as a base to make this ornament. It looks to me like it might be a type of coaster almost, a glass coaster. But I'm going to show the picture here. She did that on a 14 count fabric with all the DMC floss it called for. It's just a beautiful finish. And she also did a, um, a stitch from Hindsight, and that's a snowman with charms. And she did that on a 14 count blue opalescent Ada using DMC. She found at a thrift store, I think it was, a crate or a type of basket crate and she got it for five dollars she used a sticky board and then with a thin amount of batting to poof it up a bit and then mounted it on a piece of cardboard covered in fabric and hot glued it with some jute so it is removable i'm going to show it right here And I think that's just a fabulous finish. It looks incredible. Um, I love it that it's got a snowman too. So it's just incredible, some of these. I'm, I feel so blessed that people will send me these things that I can share with you guys because the, the ideas are endless when you can come across something and, and upcycle it to think of think beyond what it's traditionally used for. I don't know how many times I've seen CDs at our dump house and I've passed them by because I'm like, oh, they're all scraped up. I just thought of using it to pop it in my CD player, but why not use it as a base? 
why not use that crate to mount a cross stitch in? I mean, <laughs> it's brilliant. And I thank you guys so much for sharing those things with me. It's really special. I have to do some wrapping now and I'm going to do some heavy editing. And I will show you guys also how the tree is coming along. I'm still adding ornaments to it. I still find glass or gold and silver because that's the theme. So it's so far just one tree, our 10 foot tree, that's coming along nicely. I still have some ceramic trees to put out because I have three buckets of those. And I did hang up all of those cross stitches that I showed you and it, the house is really coming along. So I'll include some short little videos um, probably towards the end. So I just wanna say, um, just have a great holiday time with your family or with your stitching and crafting and enjoy, be safe, and I'll see you soon.